Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video. Before we get started on today's video, I want to announce that Come Again has two new channels for you guys to enjoy. If you're into collectible and toy reviews, then head on over to Come Again Collectibles, where all of our new and previously uploaded collectible review videos will be published from now on. Also, if you're into Funko Pops and Action Vinyls, head on over to Come Again Vinyls, where all new and previously uploaded pop review videos will be uploaded. We will no longer be publishing these videos onto the main channel, due to the success of our shows like History and Origins. We don't want to upset the algorithm or the subscribers, so if that's what you're interested in, the links will be in the description below. Now on to our video. I wanted to talk to you guys today about a really dark story within Green Lantern Comics. It has the possibility of affecting people with PTSD uh, due to previous events from childhood. It has to do with child molestation. So if you're one of these people who has experienced that and suffer from PTSD, I would go ahead and click off now, find a different video. Uh, so fair warning. Jenny Lynn Hayden, who is a superhero known as Jade and the daughter of the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott, was Christmas shopping with her brother Todd Rice, who's a superhero known as Obsidian. Todd isn't really fond of her close relationship with Kyle Rayner. You see, shortly before this story, Kyle was the only Green Lantern in the universe after the events of Emerald Twilight. Kyle decided he was going to begin rebuilding the Green Lantern Corps. Now at this time, Kyle and Jade were in a relationship, and since Jade was already a superhero and familiar with the Green Lanterns, being that her father was the original Earth Green Lantern, Kyle offered her a ring he created to share his power. Kyle's reasoning for this was because he was planning on leaving Earth for an extended period of time to rebuild the core, but didn't want to leave it without a Green Lantern. So while shopping, Jenny and Todd come upon a group of children visiting Santa. It's at this time that Jenny listens to the words Santa says to the children and suddenly has a flashback from her childhood. She immediately changes into her Green Lantern costume, kidnaps Santa, and takes him to the top of a skyscraper. See, Santa was actually Stan the janitor of the orphanage she was raised in. Stan sexually abused several of the girls there, and when he tried it with Jenny on Christmas night, her powers manifested for the first time and she was able to fend him off. Back to present day, Jenny, while holding Stan from atop this skyscraper, really wants to hurt him. But she's supposed to be a hero, right? So she really has a conflict of conscience. She knows as a hero, if she were to cross that line, there would be no coming back. But at the same time, pieces of shit like this never change. And it's far too late for her to press charges against him and she has no proof that would get him locked away. And even if she did, how would that give his victims any peace? Especially since the way our judicial system works, he'll be out to destroy young girls' lives again within a relatively short period of time. She does eventually make the conscious decision to let him go free, but tells him that she'll be watching over him so that he never comes close to another young girl again. I found this story incredibly fascinating and really made me think. If I had been in a similar situation, would I have been able to take the higher road? Many of us would like to think we could, but being in a situation like that, our base instincts and animal-like nature tend to get the better of us. For those of you who've studied psychology, it goes back to the id, the ego, and the superego. The ego is your baseline without any outside influence. The superego would be that angel on your shoulder telling you to take the road less traveled. While the id is that base, animalistic instinct, in this case, revenge. I mean, in all honesty, if we really think about it, how many of us would have dropped that SOB if we were in this same situation? I know we'd like to think we'd make the same decision as Jade, but then again, like the Joker says, all it takes is one bad day. Now, this isn't the first time Green Lantern has gone incredibly dark. I mean, we expect stories like this from Batman and maybe Green Arrow, but Green Lantern isn't really known for being a dark character, even though some of the darkest stories in DC Comics have come from the title. Roy Harper being a drug addict came out of Green Lantern Green Arrow number 85 entitled Snowbirds Don't Fly. Then in Green Lantern volume 3 number 54 when Kyle returned home to find his then girlfriend Alexandra DeWitt murdered and stuffed into the refrigerator, which I'll do a video on in the future. I mean, Green Lantern has had some pretty dark stories. So, in every issue, when that oath is said, it really takes on new meaning, given all the darkness that each of the Green Lanterns have had to overcome. I don't think the Comics Code Authority was in use at this time. If it was, it was very sporadically. DC pretty much gave up on it. 
because they started doing a lot darker comics. And even if it was, there is no way in hell this story would have ever been approved by the Comics Code Authority. I mean, talking about rape and child molestation, uh, you have the superhero holding a uh, a constru- light construct knife up to this piece of shit. And she had him tied up on top of a skyscraper. Just, she wanted to just slaughter him in the most vicious way possible. So, it... It never would have been approved. Let's put it that way. But like I said, this was a very dark story. It was a single issue story. Uh, This was one that it could have gone on for a few issues. We could have seen the ramifications of this single story for years to come. I mean, how many heroes have gone that dark to where they've actually grabbed a knife and thought about slaughtering someone in a very despicable, ruthless way as, as payback? Not many, I could say that. But then again, you have the issue where Kyle Rayner catches up to Major Force who killed Alexander DeWitt and tries to kill him. But Guy Gardner stops him by killing Major Force himself. So really, Green Lantern Comics is, it's based around darkness. In reality, we should probably expect more dark stories from Green Lantern than we do Batman. Because Green Lantern is about overcoming that darkness. Technically, Superman is about giving hope to the people, but... In reality, the Green Lantern comics is really about hope. I know they proclaim willpower and the ability to overcome great fear. That's not it at all. The Green Lantern comics are so dark and the characters have to overcome so much. It's really about hope. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And and go out and pick up an issue of Green Lantern Volume 3, number 109. Uh, this was a Christmas issue. I know we're af- we're past Christmas now, and I kind of talked about this comic before, uh, but that was more of a review, whereas I, w- I wanted to take the time to really explain this one. Because there was, though it was a single issue, it really dives into the, the mind of the superhero. How a superhero can, like Green Lantern could easily be tempted to go to the dark side how any person facing that same situation could be tempted to go to the dark side. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.